Hello, people of the internet. Uh, I am Kadethian, and this past weekend was the annual garage sale weekend for my hometown. And every year, I usually go around and check out the garage sales. I take the day off of work because the first day is the Thursday. So usually, I head back and stay with my parents Wednesday night, and I pick up the garage sale directory, go through it, circle the ones that I'm most interested in, and then I make sure I hit up the most interesting one right away in the morning the next day to hopefully get the best stuff. And usually it's pretty hit or miss. Sometimes I don't find a lot. Sometimes, I mean, usually I find something. Um, but what kind of like video games I see and all that can really vary year to year. And usually I end up spending maybe like 20 to 40 bucks or so. Something around that ballpark. Um, Usually the stuff I'm looking for is like, you know, old Nintendo games, the stuff that you might see me play on the channel. Uh, VHS tapes I've been kind of getting into recently, just because I have an old CRT in my den in my apartment. So uh, I have a VCR hooked up to it. So it's kind of nice to watch just like an 80s movie or something. I've got a bunch of like Disney movies too. I've been uh, kind of picking those up to augment like the old family collection. Um... And then I also kind of like to look for Beanie Babies on occasion. I was really into Beanie Babies when I was a kid. And I had the little guidebooks and stuff that were like predicting that by 2008, there'd only be like 50,000 copies of the Razorback left or something. And it'd be worth like $500, which we all know didn't happen. Um, but there were some of those books that uh, had already retired by the time that uh, I had started kind of collecting Beanie Babies as a kid. And I was like 10 years old or whatever. So... I didn't have money to go buy stuff like that. So it's uh, with, with people not caring about Beanie Babies now, they just have, you just find a lot of bins around. And every now and then you can find like a cool old Beanie Baby or something like that that was one that I was kind of gawking over as a kid. I know the three big ones for me were the, the three tie-dyed dinosaurs. So it's like Stag the Stegosaurus, Bronte the Brontosaurus, and Rex the T-Rex. And I did find a, kind of a beat-up copy of the Stegosaurus at a flea market, I think, two years ago. So uh, anyway, that's the kind of stuff that I'd normally look for. Uh, so I figured I'd take this video and just take a little time to show you the haul that I had and uh, recount some of my experience this year. Um, so the first house that I went to, I got uh, two games at. And this person had advertised a whole bunch of stuff like Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, um, GameCube, Game Boy, Game Gear, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so it was obviously the first one that I wanted to go to. And I remember parking out front and there were a whole lot of other cars. And the moment that garage door opened at 8 o'clock in the morning, it's like everybody gets out of their cars. <laughs> I, I did find out that this was a, uh, a collector who was using price charting for the values. So I'm not sure how good of a deal I got on much of this stuff. And I didn't really want to like blow all my cash in one spot right in the beginning of the day. So I just picked a couple of games. Um, the first one was Uniracers for the Super Nintendo, which as you can tell by the red kind of strip here was published by Nintendo. Uh, and I think this one, like the makers got sued, like the developers. I, I want to say by Pixar. I'm not totally sure, though. But I think uh, they had to end production on this game sh earlier than they wanted to. I think it's just like a unicycle racing game. I've heard it's decent. I remember, I think the poster that came with my Super Nintendo had, like, screenshots of Uniracers on it. So I've known this game has existed since I was a little kid. And, yeah, as you can see by the sticker, I paid 15 bucks for it, which I think is, you know, probably around market value. Um... But this will be fun to try uh, at some point. I haven't tested it yet. That's kind of a one thing with uh, going to garage sales and stuff is you never know how, how well does the game work, especially with cartridge games. Like, they can look fine, and you can't always get the best view of the pins or anything. But I've had a couple of games where I've come home and popped them in, and I just can't get anything out of them. Um, I don't always have a Super Nintendo at hand if i'm out at like our the family cabin and i'm going to the flea market that's out there i usually just have to use my retro to see if it works and a lot of the time it's like oh i'm not getting a dump or anything and then i come home to my super nintendo maybe it works there maybe it doesn't but uh yeah uniracers was a fun pickup uh i'm excited to, to check this game out and see what i've been missing since i was a little kid um, i don't think it's going to be mind-blowing or anything but i think it should be uh 
worth at least a half hour of my time <laughs> and the $15 that I paid for it. Uh, the second game that I got was this uh, Greatest Hits Spiral the Dragon, again, for $15. So I spent $15 at the first house. Um, and I spent $40 in total. <laughs> so I spent most of the money that I spent at that first house. As far as the Dragon, I got a PS1 for the first time at a um, local game store store closing sale, maybe like four or five years ago. It was just before the pandemic, I think. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of looking to build my PS1 collection a little bit. I've got mostly just a whole bunch of Final Fantasy games. I have a, a video that I haven't posted yet where I bought a whole bunch of them from the Square Enix uh, online store because they had a Black Friday sale and they were still selling PS1 games at the time, which was really cool. Um, so I have a whole bunch of Final Fantasy games. I'm missing some. Like, I don't have, like, tactics. But I've got uh, 7, which was a separate thing. 8, 9. I've got... Uh, the one that came with Final Fantasy, I think, 5 and 6? Yeah. So, uh, those were nice to get, especially just brand new. Unfortunately, I think the uh, the case of my Final Fantasy 6 one got chipped. So I might need to figure out how to replace the jewel case on that one. But anyway, Spyro the Dragon, <laughs> to get back to the, the game that you're all looking at, uh, it does come with, uh, I think, the manual. I think this is the manual. And it's got the disc... I didn't really take the disc out to look at it, so hopefully it works. But this is kind of one of those uh, PS1 games that I kind of consider hallmarks of the system. I mean, I remember, like, going to, like, Kids Quest as a kid, and Spyro the Dragon was just one of those games, like, they'd have P PlayStation set up, and Spyro the Dragon was just the game that they had. They usually also have, like, an N64 with, like, Pokemon Snap, and then, like, maybe a Sega Genesis with, like, Sonic 3D Blast or something on it. So yeah, I, I know a lot of people like this game. I've never had a chance to try it. So I'm looking forward to this one too. Uh, again, $15 for this one, which hopefully wasn't a bad deal. I think the, the guy said he was pricing like 10 to 20% under price charting. So I'm trusting him on that one. Uh, I do need like an, another PS1 memory card. I think all the Final Fantasy games are just eating up all the space. Anyways, uh, so that was the first house that I went to. Uh, usually... I spent like the first half of the day going around to the ones that I had marked in the directory. And then after that, I start just kind of wandering around and just stopping at any garage sale I find. Because not everybody like lists video games and stuff. Uh, the next game that I got was uh, Crash Bandicoot 2. I don't have Crash Bandicoot 1. I'm start like finding out that it's so hard to find the first ones. Like I think uh, last year I got like two Tomb Raider games. But I got like two and three. And I don't have Tomb Raider 1. So I was really hoping I'd find like Tomb Raider 1 or Crash Bandicoot 1. But I found Crash Bandicoot 2. Um, so, I mean, it was 5 bucks. so why not pick it up? I think this also comes with the manual. Um, so maybe I'll wait to play this until I, I actually have Crash Bandicoot 1. and can give that one a try. A Digimon World, I remember wanting when I was a kid, but I already had an N64. When I asked for PS1, Mom and Dad just said, nope, <laughs> one was enough. So that's kind of the one that I missed out on, at least from my point of view as like an 11, 12-year-old or whatever. Um, but yeah, this will be fun when I, uh, decide to pop it in. That is one thing about these garage sales. It's like, I'm just finding random games and you're kind of buying them just because they're cheap. So I don't always, a lot of the games, like, for example, that I got last year, I just haven't even popped in yet. So it's just kind of, I have stuff that I haven't tried yet. So if I'm just sitting in my den going, I don't know what to play. I have, you know, new stuff to play that I just happen to get at some point. Uh, the next and last video game that I got is Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 3, which I just found somewhere for 3 bucks. Um, I don't know if this game's any good. It was $3, though, and I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> it's a Game Boy game. It's hard to find Game Boy games. Like, anything older than GameCube, you just don't see. I don't know if I'm getting to these places late or people are kind of realizing the value of some of these games. Like, even the Wii, it's hard to find stuff. You see a lot of, like like Wii balance boards. In past years, I've seen Wii consoles and stuff. I think one of them had a free copy of Mario Kart inside of it, which was pretty sweet. Uh, so I, I have three Wiis now. One of The first one I wanted to get because I wanted to hack a spare Wii just so uh, if my original Wii like blew out or something, which it has done before, 
I have all my games and stuff like backed up to a second Wii, especially because like I can't buy that stuff again because the eShop or the the Wii Shop channel is closed. So I just want wanted to have a fallback, but I I just really don't have much to say on Bugs Bunny. I think uh, I had a cousin who had a, one of these crazy cancel games a long time ago, and I watched her play it for like five minutes in a car once. But yeah, it'll be fun to try at some point. And then so that was it for the games. Um, so the other items I got, I have four more items, and they're just all DVDs. Uh, there were a couple places I went to that actually had fairly cheap DVDs, uh, which was just 50 cents each, which, I mean, for a movie, that's really cheap, like two quarters. Uh, so what was it? I think the first place I went to, I got two, and then the second place I went to, I got two more. The first one is just a sealed copy of Independence Day, which is just a good classic movie to have on hand. Uh... I recently got rid of my cable TV, which I didn't have any channels to begin with, which is why I cut it. So I bought an antenna just so I had, like, local news and stuff. Or I could just put something on the TV, you know. Um, and that's actually getting me more channels than my cable did. I'm surprised how many just over-the-air channels there are. Like, apparently H&I you get. <laughs> I was just expecting, you know, like, the local CBS NBC, ABC, Fox, that kind of stuff. But my TV found like 41 channels when I did a channel scan. But uh, in light of that, I, I'm trying to collect some more, like, like I've mentioned before, VHS tapes and DVDs are just nice to have too. So I'm just going for like classic movies that I know I like just to kind of, I guess, build my own streaming service in a way. I just have movies that I can select from that I know I like. So Independence Day is a good one. And this one's still sealed. I think it's just from like a Walmart bargain bin somewhere. But uh, that doesn't matter. I'll open it at some point and give it a watch. At that same place, I got to Catch Me If You Can, which is kind of a, a fun Leonardo DiCaprio movie where he's like playing like a con artist who like fakes being a Pan Am pilot and ends up like counterfeiting a bunch of like checks and money and stuff. I think Tom Hanks must play... Uh, like the FBI agent trying to catch him. It was a fun movie. I've seen it a few times. Uh, I always enjoy watching it. And the next place I went to, I got two movies that I always try, just kind of paired in my mind. Uh, the first one's The Prestige. I really like this movie. It's got a really cool twist at the end. Uh, I, don't, I guess I shouldn't spoil anything. But it's about, uh, I guess, I think Hugh Jackman and what's his name? Christian Bale are playing like two different magicians and they're trying to one-up each other. And uh, they end up doing some really funky stuff to one-up each other. Yeah, and it's the funky electricity going on. Yeah, so this was a really good movie. It's a, it's a personal favorite. I know uh, a long time ago I was making a team of shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Gold and Silver and I wanted to name a, a shiny Mew the Prestige just because I like this movie a lot, and I thought it fit for, like, a shiny meal. So anyway, looking forward to watching this one again. Then the last item I have, the last DVD, is The Illusionist, which I think came out around the same time as The Prestige. Now, obviously, it's got, like, that same kind of magician theme, but I think this one takes place in, like, a more, like, World War I era or something in Europe. And I forget what the basic plot is, but I think the government's trying to go after the guy because they're not sure whether the magic he's doing is real or not. But uh, this is also a really fun movie that kind of plays with the magician theme. So looking forward to watching this one again. I think this one is the one I've seen most recently out of the four. I think it was on a streaming service, and I watched it like two years ago. So yeah, looking forward to this one. I'm glad I added uh, those four DVDs to my collection. Uh, anyways... Garage sales are always a fun time. You never know what kind of weird stuff you can see. I know one place had advertised Beanie Baby stuff, so I just wanted to go there to dig through their bins. And apparently the Beanie Babies had all sold by the time that I got there, which stunned me. Someone bought the whole bin, which, like I said, I didn't think people were really going for that stuff anymore. But uh, what was left was a whole table full of just boxes like whole booster boxes of Beanie Baby trading cards, which like I thought those were even less popular. I don't – who – and I think uh, I talked to one of the people running the sale, and uh, I think all of that stuff belonged to their mother, 
And just their demeanor made me think the mother had recently passed, which is very sad. But uh, that mother must have really loved Beanie Babies and been a huge collector. She had all kinds of Beanie Baby stuff. Um, yeah. So I might make more of these kinds of videos in the future. If you guys are interested, let me know. Uh, I do have two flea markets that I'm planning to go to. Um, one is more local, and there's the one that's out by my cabin. Um, so the one that's local is next weekend. And then the cabin one is Memorial Day weekend, which is the weekend after. Uh, those are, I think, more hit and miss. Like, I think I almost always come home with something on garage sale day. But the flea markets, uh, usually, like, the video game stuff there is just vendors. So you don't always find deals. Like, you'll flip through stuff, maybe grab, like, an Amiibo or something. But I have found some gold at those flea markets before. I know the local one one year I found a virtual boy for 20 bucks, which was a really sweet find. I took a while for that stupid thing to power on and one of the eyes was not working. So I did have to put a fair bit of money into it, sending it off to a guy I found on the Virtual Boy, like Planet Virtual Boy forums. I, I think I just found him on eBay and purchased his services there. So I had to send my Virtual Boy off to California to get the ribbon soldering repair done. And I have that back now and it works great. But I only have Mario Tennis and I bought um, like the Hyper Flash 32. But I'm kind of anti-piracy, so I pretty much mostly got that for homebrew stuff. Usually when I have, like, if you see me using a ROM for something like on an FX Pack Pro or SD to SNES, I've dumped that ROM myself. So, like, I own the cartridge and use something like a Retro or the um, Super NT or the NT Mini Noir or something like that to dump the ROM myself so I'm not downloading it or pirating it off the internet. So I don't, it, it kind of breaks my own rule, self-imposed rule, I guess, to uh, pirate like Wario World or Wario Land or something for the Virtual Boy. So I'll probably try and pick those games up in the future and work on collecting those. Uh, but yeah, I found that Virtual Boy at a flea market, which was a really cool find. I found player's guides at the flea market before. Uh, you never know what kind of stuff you'll find. So it's always fun to go. And uh, if I have stuff to report... And I can make like at least a 10 minute video out of talking about what I found and what I saw. I'll probably make a video and post it uh, unless people really hate these videos for some reason. But yeah, uh, if you guys liked anything or had comments on what I can do better, please let me know. And thank you for watching.